Hey, what's going on guys? Hope everyone had a great week as usual. Changing the frame a little bit of this video so I have a little more room and I read that everything should come in thirds. So one third here, one third, one third, and something like this. The video for this week is gonna be all about interviewing and I've just been thinking about it a lot because I've been doing it myself the past couple of months and I, it's just been on my mind. So I wanted to make a video about it. This whole thing is really a difficult process. It's difficult for employers, it's difficult for candidates. There's a lot of people trying to solve the problem of interviewing, but actually it's a really tough problem to solve because it's an, at its core, it's a very social, dynamic, psychological type of thing, which makes it really hard. So. I'm sure 99% of you, you will interview someone in your lifetime. You will be interviewed many times in your lifetime. In this video, I'm just gonna give five tips, my opinion on five things that I think will make you interview to the best of your ability. And it's a little bit catered towards software, of course. And without further ado, let's do it. All right, let's get straight into it. First point that I wanna make is knowing exactly what you're being measured on. What are you being measured on? But everything, all the different types of things you could be measured on just boils down to two main things. The first one being competency and the second one being personality. For whatever position you're applying to, there's a big spectrum of things from very entry level positions to super, super senior level positions, but there's always like a competency level that you have to be at just to be eligible for that position. So that's the most basic thing that you're measured on. Can you write code? Can you talk about the things that you wrote down on your resume? Can you solve a problem? You know, all those kind of basic competency levels are probably measured very quickly in the interview process. The one thing I wanna say about measuring someone's competency level is always, always, always be on the lookout. It's not just measured via the coding problem or that technical quiz. It's every single discussion you might have with your employer actually measures the competency. So what I kind of like doing is, I kind of just, maybe when I first speak with a candidate on the phone, just bullshit a little bit, talk about their projects, see how well they can speak to their projects. And if I can tell when someone can speak really well about something they can work, they've can they been working on, and that actually reflects a high level of competency or whatever competency I'm expecting. Besides speaking well, obviously another measure of this thing is just putting pencil to paper and asking them to code. They have to translate all the thoughts up here into some kind of code to be useful, right? All right, so back to the main point, what are we being measured on? But after competency is kind of checked off, like, okay, this person is competent enough, the next thing to measure is the personality, which is what the rest of this video is more about. And so many things bucket into this personality thing, but that's the next major thing that you're gonna be measured on after you've proven you're competent enough. Would this person fit in? Is this person a good culture fit? Is this person not an asshole? Do I actually like this person? Could I work with him or her? So that's kind of the topic for the rest of the points and let's just go on to point number two. Point number two that I wanna talk about is body language and this is super important when you go meet the employer for the first time but body language is a really subtle thing that you might overlook but it makes such a big difference. Do you know all the times you kind of thought that oh, that was a little bit of a weird conversation or that interaction was a little off. Usually when you think something was a little off, it's almost always very likely to be a weird kind of body language. And you can't really describe it well, but you just have a feeling. And that feeling can actually be deal breaker sometimes for an employer. First thing you could do is make sure you, when the interviewer stands up, when someone comes in to meet you, you shouldn't just stay in your chair, right? Stand up, greet them halfway in the room and just, you know, be like you wanna meet them. So just one quick story, but one quick story, I was like third out of five people interviewing someone and I walked into the room to meet this person for the first time. He actually stood up, but we didn't meet halfway. He just stood there and I kind of walked across 100% of the room. I walked across the room and just shook his hand, right? It would have felt much better if we kind of just walked towards each other and be like, hi, nice to meet you. But he just kind of stood up and I was like, oh, okay, let me just make my way all the way over there. Make sure you face the person, just be attentive. All these little details in your body language count. If you wanna learn more about this, just YouTube about just like standard body language, like facing the person you're talking with, just 
It's really easy stuff and it makes a big difference. All right, so that's point number two. Third point I wanna make is that if you're doing a technical interview, be sure to talk out loud, especially if you're coding. When you're coding or whiteboarding or maybe sharing a document with the interviewer and just writing down any code, it's not very good to be too silent for too long. If you need a moment of silence just to think, just preempt that silence so it's not so random. Just be like, okay, let me just digest this problem. I need one minute just to think about it real quick. So just say that first and then start becoming silent and think about it. But even if you preempt it like that, don't try to be silent for too long. Anything you're thinking about, like I really mean anything you're thinking about for these technical interviews, unless it's like cats and Reddit, but anything you're thinking about, just get it down on paper so you and the interviewer can really be synced up because they just wanna know what you're thinking about and your thought process. So you don't want it to have it all up here. You want it to get it from here out into the open. Also, when you're writing all this stuff, try your best to make it as organized as possible. A lot of people do like to write things down, but it's all over the place, scribbles everywhere, like some code here, some notes there, some you know, random notes here. So you can just practice, you can actually just practice this pretty easily. Like take a coding problem and write down your things as organized as you possibly can. Because remember, like what does writing something in an organized fashion represent? It just represents organized thought process, right? So that's point number three. Don't think too much in your head, get your thoughts out. Point number four is so easy. This part is so easy. It's just follow up messages and this will take 10 minutes of your time and it goes a very long way. Just send follow up messages. It's nice, it's good practice. It really leaves a good impression for the employer and literally I can kind of tell from my own statistics of interviewing people that I would say like 20% or less actually send follow up messages and it does make a difference. All right, fifth, fifth and last point I wanna make in this whole video is asking good questions. Asking good questions is really, really important because it actually shows you're interested in the position or the company without just saying you're interested in the position or company, right? It's one thing just to say it, it's another thing to show it. It's kinda of like if you're trying to get the girl, right? You can't just say, I'm a really funny guy. That'll probably just give you a, that guy sucks, right? You have to actually show you're funny or do something funny, you can't just say it. It's like almost the same thing for the job process too. When you're interviewing, don't just be like, I'm really interested in this position. You have to like show that a little deeper via questions. So again, good questions are a good way to show you're interested without saying you're interested. I'm just gonna give you a set of good questions that I brainstormed over and if you use these, I think they're just gonna work well. How will you measure success in this role? What does success look like for this role? Another one could be, how is the company and the technology gonna grow in the next year, over the next three years? How would I be able to provide the most value for the company? What does your typical day look like? What do you do? Let's see, let's see. Um, what are some of the most challenging things with the current software that's being built? Major theme with all those questions that we just talked about is that all it does is reiterate your interest in the company and that's exactly what the company wants to know, right? It's almost counterintuitive. It's not really the company gets so interested in you. Many times it's the more you're interested in that company, the more the company actually becomes interested in you because you stand out. You'd be surprised about how much you can control in this whole process just by being interested and like just interviewing well but it's definitely a skill to be learned. Not everyone is just good at it up front. I know like if you have the luxury of having some kind of career center or something at your school to help you interview prep, I would highly just recommend you do a little mock interviews or just prep because it's not just a job thing. It's like a people thing, how you interact and present yourself in a really good way. So don't think of it as purely just this professional thing and F that, just think of it more as like, this is a really good life skill to have and I should work on it, all right? All right guys, that's all I have for today. Hoped this new spacing is cool. It's actually fun because I can move around, but I'll see everyone next week, all right? Later.